Okay, well, I would like to invite our uh, first guest speaker, uh, Professor Albert Sofino. He's a renowned neurosurgeon of Russia. He's a living legend at, uh, of neurosurgery in Russia. And uh, currently, he's working as a direct, chief physician medical director at Federal Center of, of Neurosurgery of the Ministry of Health, the Russian Federation at City of Tumen, and professor and chairman, Department of Neurosurgery, I.M. Cheno, first Moscow State Medical University. He is a, a very ne renowned neurosurgeon in skull based neurosurgery, aneurysm, neurosurgery, neuro oncology. And he has done his uh, neurosurgery training from 1999. He has presented in various conferences at national, international level and published more than 47 papers. And uh, he is a mentor and uh, course director of. Uh, various programs of skull-based surgery, practical anatomy of brain, fiber dissection, peripheral nerve surgery, skull-based surgery at uh, various uh, international institutes. And today he will be talking on exoscopic, endoscopic, cranioframe, geoma surgery in children. So I would like to invite our first speaker to present his presentation. Please, sir. Dear Sensei Kato. ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ポイントはいいですね。ありがとう。ありがとうございます。ポイントはいいですね。ありがとう。ありがとうございます。ポイントはいいですね。ありがとう。ありがとうございます。ポイントはいいですね。あり
artistic parts. So first step, we use Amai reservoir. You see on this uh, slide. Uh, so if this part of the tumor is larger than the solid parts, so first step, we put Amai reservoir. If uh, if uh, no indication for other surgery, a stable condition of the patient, so only option is injection of the drug inside into the Amai reservoir. If uh, it's not stable situation, if there are indication for the further animal of the tumor, we, we use endoscopic or microsurgical techniques. This is a my reservoir. It's a ventricular access device with interventricular catheter system for the purpose of the chronic access to the intratecal space. In case of craniofrigomas, we have large the components again. In order to decompress the neurovascular structure, we use the implantation of the Amai reservoir as the first stage of the neurosurgical treatment. And you see in this video how it's made. This is Amai reservoir, the ventricular catheter put inside of the cyst. And you see the on, on, on the MRI after, after, after treatment, I'm putting Amai reservoir. You see the ventricular catheter inside of the, inside of the cyst. Uh, this is our experience about the treating cystic craniofrigoma by the insertion of the Amai reservoir. So we have now uh, our experience not totally 10 cases, average is in the eight years, and insertion of Amai reservoir and closing removing of craniofrigoma in six cases, and only and only Amai is four cases. So microsurgical after removing in these six cases, uh, three cases microsurgically removed, and the endoscopic transnatal also three cases. Uh, about Amai reservoir treatment, so um, average cyst drainage frequency per year, so uh, this is number is six. So during the year, six times, we just punch an uh, average of the Amai reservoir. And the volume per session is near the 10 milliliters. After this, I want to show our uh, some uh, clinical cases. So case one is about the patient, female, six years old. The typical compliance was the visual impairment, more than one right side, frequent headaches. <clears throat> uh, five months worried about headaches with gradual deterioration of the vision. Uh, the, the patient was consulted by an ophthalmologist, a neurologist, and MRI revealed a mass vision and the supracellular craniofrangioma. So you see, uh, like you see in the MRI, you see the big uh, cystic part of the tumors. So why we decide see the MRI before type co craniofrigioma and so why we decide as first step because condition of the patients is difficult so we put inside the MRI reservoir as the first step of this kind of surgery. Uh, this is our operation room for this kind of surgery. You see equipment, operation table, endoscopic. This is the skin landmarks for insertion for my reservoir. And uh, now we start to open the skin in the entry point. Very carefully, bloodless, because it's a small child. Mostly use the monopolar cowder. The second step is we create uh, under the skin the pocket for the uh, amaya. When we open the bone, just to create hole, bar hole, by the drill. And then after uh, ultrasound navigation in real time, was uh, a little bit narrow ventricles. We put inside special endoscope. It's a very thin endoscope, near the one millimeter only. You see, put in the endoscope inside of the lateral ventricle by the ultrasound control. Now, the tip of the endoscope inside the lateral ventricle, and we check the lateral ventricle, and we see very well the foramen monroe with the, with the tumor cyst wall. The septal vein, this is a good landmark inside. It's very important for understanding anatomy. 
and localization of the endoscope tip for the good orientation of the surgeon, because this is the endoscopic surgery. Now, when we localize the wall, we use the laser uh, uh, laser just to open the wall penetration, vaporization of the wall of the cyst of the cranial frangioma. You see very precisely without the contact from the distance, we just create a uh, very precise size of the uh, of the penetration because uh, penetration size must be not large because the contents of the of the of the uh, cyst is not good for the brain when we uh, just remove contents of the cyst you see on the syringe and after removing the contents of the syringe of the cyst from the cyst we just start to clean by the saline water And cleaning the contents of the cyst. And uh, after the clean, we uh, reveal the good view inside of the cyst. You see now the endoscopic picture. And uh, this is good cleaning, give us a good visualization for us. And uh, this give us the uh, possibility to put inside the tip of a ventricular drain in the good place, precise good place. In this case, in, on the bottom of the cyst, you see the mammillary body. And this is the bottom of the cyst. And now we put we put inside ventricular drainage in, in this precise place. We use uh, the technology uh, uh, endoscope stillet because uh, the size of the endoscope give us possibility to put endoscope inside of the ventricular drainage. You see, and now when we put the tip of the drainage in, in the good place, we remove endoscope from from the from the catheter. So technology is the endoscope stillet technology. And when we connect the reservoir drainage and put it in the pocket, what we created before. Pocket space, pocket space under the skin. And then suturing the skin, aponeurosis and skin. This is our technique, how I do it, the Amaya reservoir placement. So this is, this is after operation. You give, uh, this is before, this is after, and you see, a ventricular catheter inside of the cyst and there's the tip of the catheter just on the bottom. So it gives possibility as drainage all, all contents of the cyst. So this is possible uh, only uh, endoscopic view, endoscopic control. It's very good for this kind of technology. It's very precise technology and very safe. Uh, case, case two about multicystic craniopharyngioma. Uh, you see the cranial frangioma before, and you see the two compartments of the cyst. You see two of one, one, two. So why we decide drainage all two, two compartments by induction of the two catheter? One catheter is for this compartment, second catheter for this compartment. So it's before, it's after surgery. It's also possible uh, by using our technology and by using our endoscopic technology. You see the you see the Amai reservoir with uh, two ventricular catheters, the possibility connection device. You see the step of operation. Just put uh, these two ventricular catheters inside of the cyst. This uh, this is a CT uh, CT 3D CT. You see the catheter inside of the compartments. 
so uh, if uh, amyo reservoir stage is not enough for this kind of surgery is uh, most useful uh, in our opinion is endoscopic transnasal surgery Uh, also, we have experience about uh, seven cases in the child about this, and the uh, total in the, the total uh, endoscopic was uh, in five cases and subtotal in two cases. Of course, the, this is typical operation. The is typical operation you know, must be very oriented in the uh, nasal cavity. So, if you, you, you see in our slide, so good landmarks, good landmarks, it's possible to, to recognize inside of the nasal cavity, middle turbinate, nasal septum, coana, and the uh, sphenotostium, and so on. You see the step by step our uh, operation in the scopic and to cellular region. So, adrenalization of the cavity, middle turbinectomy, because we need the space, we need the space for this kind of surgery. You see the re and removing. And uh, out practice, the inferior turbinate also, for example. All these steps just for create the space. Of course, inside of the of the uh, of the uh, inside of the cavity, you must understand very well the endoscopic also landmarks. And as you see, so before we have in our lab, we have a lot of training. Uh, not only for residents, also for, for experienced neurosurgeons before we start this kind of the surgery. You see step by step the section and, and we recognize the lead mass. Again, the child surgery is uh, very important to understand. This is uh, not so many restrict for this kind of surgery because uh, as you see, uh, we, have, uh, we have good uh, sphenoid sinus just from six, uh, six years is good sinus, volume of sinus just for this kind of surgery. And another very important information was the, about intercarotid distance. Because intercarotid distance is established in early age in children and does not undergo significant change in of the child. And you see this distance. Uh, in this kind of surgery, one of the most important step is, is uh, close after surgery. So the uh, understanding and creating a good uh, another set of lab, for example, like a Hadati lab is very important step. You see how we create the step. This is a scheme about this Hadati lab. This is possible to create a standard lab, large lab, or maybe expand extended lab. If you have a big, a big, a big necessity for the clothing. Uh, this is example case three, male six years old, also uh, also traditional complaints, traditional neurological status, and uh, and the, we see in this slide a big uh, cystic compartment. So I. It, First step, we uh, decide to, to create the AMI reservoir installation inside of the cyst. You see the ventricular catheter inside, similar after installation of the AMI reservoir. Stabilize the, the condition of the patient. And then after stabilized condition of the patient, we go to the endoscopic uh, removing of the tumor by transplant nasal way. Uh, you see the anterior row of the sphenoid sinus. This is Vomer. The big tumor inside of the sphenoid sinus. Cutting the wall by the scissors. Uh, use the, the, the punch. Edison, drilling. Uh, 
now it drill a little bit more and more. And when we open the Dura, we have very good LED marks. This is the optic chiasm, for example. Now we open the Dura and open the twist part of the tumor also. So inside we see the Amai Research ventricular catheter inside. Very good position, you see. Very good position of the ventricular catheter because it's endoscopically technique. And now we start to dissect the wall. This is, you see, bimanual direction uh, because the extent is a supracellar so a little bit open more dura. Just to create to shoot it, just to open more dura, just good for good visualization. Uh, after we remove the ventricular catheter and uh, uh, continue to dissect very precisely dissect the wall of the cyst from the surrounding neurovascular structure. This is the chiasm. This is the wall of the craniopharyngioma cyst. And we use all kinds of instruments. Even, uh, even uh, sharp cutting by the scissors is necessary sometimes. If you don't want to, to damage some important neurovascular structure. Again, again, sharp cutting by scissors. And then remove solid part, completely total. Liliquist membrane, mammillary body, pod ventricle, what is uh, all is open. It's a total removing of the cystic and solid part. You see very well anatomy, landmarks, both Monroe, <coughs> polyplexus, in the thalamic adhesions. And uh, this is another uh, very important step for the closing of the one. So, first step is Pongastan, then FET. When fat, fat is very important in this kind of cell. When uh, just suturing first cell letter, just to close the fat. It's not easy to create the suturing, but it's possible. You see general view after. Again, Spongastan. Then after put flap, Hadati flap, <clears throat> over the Spongastan, surgical, surgical fibrillar, and then glue. And then glue. This is a malay after operation. And you see a very good flap to wipe after surgery. Case four, male, uh, more adult, 15 years old male, uh, complies for the decrease of the visual activity on the right eye. So uh, patients have headaches, decrease vision on the right eye. And after MRI, MRI neurologist will use the tumor in the uh, terror region. You see MRI before, type Q. And again, because no cystic part, so uh, as first step, we use endoscopic and another remove. Okay, typical, typical endoscopic and another approach. Open the bone from the tele of the serra turcica. Uh, drilling the bone, open the dura of the <clears throat> above the chiasm also. Open the dura, dissect the dura from the from the tumors.
We see very well an anatomy inside inside the dura. We see very well the uh, chiasm and the very, uh, very very careful dissection also by the curage, for example. Because a lot of lot of uh, very important neurovascular stuff inside. This is the stack, and also uh, very careful dissection of the stack. <clears throat> Chiasm. This is the vessel. Uh, A1, A2, communicate. It's a very important dissection. Not pulling, not pulling. Again, sharp cutting after dissection. By manual dissection, continue. And remove the, uh, the, the, so, uh, the solid part of the tumor also. After removing, you see, good preserving the stack is very important. Open the, open the third ventricle, chiasm, uh, vessels, pituitary stack, pituitary gland, chiasm, third ventricle open. And this is the A1, A2, A com artery. Also, all this important stack is preserved by very careful dissection. This is after operation, again, totally removing and a very good another set of lab. Case five, uh, 13 years old, there's a typical complaint, typical situation. Uh, this, is, uh, this is MRI before, you, in the, you see the big cystic part, so I, uh, Amaya reservoir was installed before the surgery, just to stabilize the situation with the patient. You see the ventricular catheter from Amaya inside. And then second step was the endoscopic removing. So this is a typical endoscopic approach. When open the dura, Mercedes like uh, open the dura, dissect the structure of the tumor from the dura. And again, again, we open the, open the cyst and you see inside the catheter, inside of the cyst, again, the manual dissection, again, dissection by the curate, Forceps. Suction. But in this situation, very um, strong adherence to the new, very important neural adherence structure. So I, at this thought, we uh, decide to, to, to finish. So I now, now start, uh, start to close. Uh, to use tachocomb. So why uh, catheter put, uh, stay inside, not removing catheter because not totally removing. Again, put the flap. Teach. Teach the fat graph by the dura by one two stitch and then flip. This is MRI after, and you see a very good uh, surviving of another set of fat four months after operation. This is endoscopic remove uh, view. Sorry, this is another set of fat on the MRI. Of course, if uh, not possible to remove the uh, tumor by endoscopic transnasal approach, the uh, last option and one of the most important options is the microsurgical technique. And in this situation, our clinic has some evolution about using interoperatively uh, optic device. So you see, 
at, uh, at first, the people start by by the loop when use a microscope. And now in our clinic, just from 2022, we use exoscope. This is a really new device, exoscope. You see our operation room just preparing for this kind of exoscopic surgery. You see the exoscope position of the patient and the, some uh, some some also devices uh, monitors and uh, and and so on. 4K 3D exoscope monitors. This is the position of the operation team. You see the third main surgeon, first assistant, and second assistant. By the pilot, the pilot is the device for the moving of the exoscope. And a lot of screens, navigation screens. The quality of screens is one of the best. 4K exoscopic screens, 3D. This is our experience about the uh, microsurgical, microsurgical removing. You see the 11 cases, total 10, subtotal one. We use the frontal, bifrontal, arbitrary gigamatic transmissal approach. And in four cases, we use the K-hole supraorbital eyebrow approach with the exoscope in four cases. So uh, case, I want to show the case about this uh, keyhole approach. Uh, again, patients uh, female, six years old, patient with uh, patient was hospitalized in our clinic with, with very difficult critical condition. And you see the MRI before. As you see, really difficult situation, really difficult challenge tumor inside of the, and completely pulling, filling the third ventricle. Type C, type C, no cystic, so I only one choice, uh, only one choice, and the very small sinus, so only one choice, only microsurgical removing. And uh, uh, patient in very difficult condition, so I uh, decide to, uh, Use a minimal invasive uh, K hole supraorbital approach. And you see how create the approach. See step by step supraorbital approach. Standard, remove the bone, frontal bone, part of the frontal bone, and then also remove part of the orbit piece, orbit roof. By creating this kind of approach, very useful is the device is the, the sonopet ultrasound knife, as you see on the on the screen. And remove remove the, the piece of the orbit roof. And now you see general view of the approach for this kind of surgery. Open the dura. Open the dura. And now step by step, we go inside the uh, to the cellar region. You see the optic nerve. Open the arachnoid membrane, drain the CSF. And start to remove the tumor. You 
Iose Atere, care te interna care te atere. And for remove this giant tumor, we use all kinds of approach, optical karate, for example, like this situation. They say, just to create more open uh, this, uh, this root, when start to remove from lamina terminalis approach, also you see the A1, chiasm, lamina terminalis, And also inter, inter opticus root also. This is a two opticus and between also. So all, all roots we use in this case just to remove this kind of tumor. Again, again, this is a lamina terminalis, uh, A2, A1, A com. So you see all this root, optical carotid, lamina terminalis, interoptic. We use for removing this kind of tumor because it's really challenging for the surgeon situation. You see? Approach. This is after MRI before. This is MRI after operation total. Near the total removing of the cranial pharyngioma by exoscopic K-hole, uh, K-hole 3D approach. So why uh, some words about the exoscope? Now exoscope is the future. Uh, the future, especially for the young generation in neurosurgery for the young residents, so, and the uh, exoscope have adventures. So this is one of the most important, the ergonomic comfort for the surgeon. Uh, second is the first surgical assistant being able to comfort assist during process because uh, he sees uh, the same, 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 uh, same picture like uh, uh, main surgeon uh, high degree of the depth perception, uh, and, and so on and so on. And also one of the uh, most important, I think, and I feel in this situation, less excessive harmful light exposure on the eye, eye surgeon also, because surgeon see operation many, many times. Of course, uh, 3D scope have a limitation, like you see in this screen. But I think future, future work is necessary. And uh, uh, modern, uh, as I believe, modern imaging te techniques like exoendoscopy help to perform complex operation, reducing intraposterior risk for complication. And the treatment of cardiofigoma is it is necessary to select the tactics of the treatment based on the location, structure of the tumor, and the patient condition. This is our take-home message. First one, assessment of the presence of the cystic and solid components and the ratio. If cystic components predominant, drainage with the amide reservoir is performed. Third one, drainage technique. Big tightness, fenestration of the sister wall should correspond to the maximum size of the catheter to prevent the of the discontent into the lateral ventricle. Lavage to the clear by the clear water. And in case of predominance of the solid company, surgical removal by the using end of the endoscopic necessary. In case of high tumor growth, and the needs of the unusual angles of attack and exoscope is very perspective. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sofino. That was a wonderful lecture about craniopharyngioma and the various new techniques. 
and the approach. So the session is open for the discussion. First, I would like to invite our uh, experienced commentator, Professor Kimura. Professor Kimura, will you please give your comments? Oh, hi. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Sorry. Sorry for my late. I so enjoyed. Professor, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, I totally agree with your uh, tactical strategy. And of course, nowadays, uh, almost crying in Franjom can be removed by an Indonesian approach you showed in your presentation. But uh, some, of course, uh, partially uh, re remaining remained in the intercranial. So in the component can be removed by the exoscopic transcranial approach. I totally agree with the very excellent techniques. Fantastic. I so excited to see your surgical techniques. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> in the live surgery, as you showed your techniques, so fantastic. And uh, when, when I visited your institute and uh, I learned yeah. a lot from uh, your techniques, so. so in my of my comment is my question is uh, do you have some experience to a uh, simultaneous surgery transcranial endonasal approach for the giant some patients suffering a giant cranial pharyngioma can be needed to be a trans endonasal transcranial approach for some tumor? I didn't know. Yeah, it's a very good question. Thank you, Hidikita, for this question. So I understand because you have a lot of experience and you understand about challenge of this situation. Of course, sometimes, sometimes, not so, so many, but one, two case we have uh, of, of combination, uh, transnasal or, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, open brain open. surgery. But usually, usually we divide, we divide not in one station, but we decide before operation and we display to the patient, okay, this is a difficult case. So we start, for example, by by transnasal, or we start, for example, by uh, open surgery, transcranially, and we, if we have the, some remnants, second step will be transnasal, maybe, or, tra or, or, or transcranial. Simultaneously, in one session, it's a little bit difficult, but uh, not, mm. so, not, not so frequently, but we have experience, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I enjoyed that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kimura. So, Dr. Maruf, uh, do you have some comments for the professor? <laughs> Hello, Dr. Maruf. Can you uh, hear me? Yes, yes. Good evening. Okay. Good uh, so evening. Thank you, Professor, for your. Uh, beautiful presentation and um, your uh, good results. Um, so uh, do you, uh, during the transfinital surgery, do you use uh, endoscopic hold, holder or uh, pneumatic uni arms? Okay, good questions again about the holders. Yeah, uh, we have, of course, we have, uh, 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 Holders like Leila, there's uh, pneumo holders like Mitaka. And in standard situation, if uh, uh, not necessary, maybe difficult dissection, for example, uh, we use uh, pneumo holder. But in unusual situation, of course, assistant take uh, in the scope in your hands and help me, for example. Mitaka holders only standard situation we use. Thank you, Professor. Uh, professor, there are three questions from uh, Dr. Sujan Sharif. So, Dr. Sujan Sharif, can you directly ask or should I uh, narrate the questions? Uh, hello, Professor. I can uh, directly ask the questions. Please. Uh, uh, number one question is the what is the indication of aspiration after reservoir uh, insertion? Of course, we check the condition condition of the of the visualization. Most most important uh, most important since is the visualization. If you have deterioration of the visualization of the patient, you must check 
by MRI, and you, if you see the enlarge of the cis volume, you start to aspirate. And hypertension clinics. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, another question. Uh, in case uh, uh, three, why there is nose bleeds as a presentation in craniopharyngioma? Epistaxis, I think you mean the epistaxis. In case three, I shouldn't miss. Uh, what about this there reservoir? Is, uh, no, no. There is uh, uh, the patient uh, present uh, as nose bleeds, epistaxis, I think. Please. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. no, no, no. One, okay. one case, one case, uh, because very adherent structure, very adherent structure, not possible to dissect uh, uh, carefully and safely. So I, I, uh, 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 remnants stay in the place. So I, I don't remove the drainage and it's only closed. So not total removal. Thank you, Professor. And uh, well, I have another very, query. Very. Regarding uh, which fat do you have to choose uh, uh, more, the abdominal fat or thigh fat? Abdominal, abdominal. Abdominal fat. Abdominal. And uh, uh, sir, uh, which type of uh, telescope you have used in case of children? Uh, which diameter? Oh, it's standard, standard, uh, standard telescopes, uh, four millimeter. Four but millimeter. Yeah, and now we start also another telescope because I uh, use a lot of 3D uh, technology. So I, I also have uh, 3D, 3D, uh, 3D telescope also. And I, I think also maybe future for the is the future of uh, transnatal surgery. Sense vision, sense vision from Israel. Thank you for Professor for your excellent. Uh... This telescope is six millimeter. Yeah. This real 3D, real 3D image. Also possible now in transnormal surgery. Thank you, Professor, for your excellent, innovative, uh, modern technique presentation on cranium pharyngioma. Uh, we have learned a lot from it. Okay, thank you, thank you. Welcome. To, uh, uh, I want to say welcome to our clinic, especially for young residents. We have a good lab just for training and uh, for, for our technology. Not only standard endoscopic, microscopic, uh, even for exoscopic surgery, it's possible to receive the skills. So, welcome, Professor. You, Thank uh, you. Thank so you, you know, you can leave uh, the address and the email uh, on which uh, it can be contacted for your institute. Will forward on the last, to... last, 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 uh, last screen, last screen. Sorry, yeah. moment. Share it so that uh, residents can take advantages. Okay. Okay. Uh, you see the site? Yes. The chat, YouTube. So it's possible to contact with me if some young residents want to study these skills. So welcome. So everybody can note down the uh, given addresses and uh, you can learn from Professor. So Dr. Of course, Abhita, of course, of course. you have raised we open hands. To the Yeah, we open for the world's uh, community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. There is one question from Dr. Abhinash. Dr. Abhinash, uh, please. Yes. Can, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Can I am I audible? Yes. Thank you, uh, Professor, for your beautiful presentation. Uh, it was really nice and uh, we could learn a lot. Uh, my question is, uh, in your endoscopic uh, endonasal procedures, have you had any cases of uh, post-op CSF rhinorrhea? Rhinorrhea, yeah. Yeah, in, 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 this, uh, in this series, child series, we don't have rhinorrhea, uh, CSF rhinorrhea. But it is very important questions. And uh, when we start and uh, before, uh, we pay attention, a lot of attention for the preparing, how we, we close, we will close. So I, exactly. Uh, so why uh, standardly we, we use two harder clip, even even mm -hmm. two harder from left and right side, if some risky okay. situation, just to reduce this possibility. Okay, and have, have you ever um, had to put a lumbar drain? Uh, lumbar drain, yeah. Uh, first, also very interesting question. <laughs> we put mm -hmm. lumbar drain in every cases if it is possible. 
not only for prevent uh, CSF renorrhea, but just to manage the, the diaphragma cell. Exactly, exactly. So I was so wondering whether very you could, important uh, thing. If you don't yes. manage diaphragma cell, you not possible to uh, remove remove completely. Ah, uh, exactly. So I was curious whether you put the lumbar drain very to important step. Like five weeks. First step yes. before operation. Drainage. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your answer. Professor Yoko, ma'am, please. Do you have any comments about this no, wonderful thank, thank you very much, uh, Sofiano. Uh, excellent talk, as always. So you bought everything uh, you, you want. So I think uh, maybe uh, that you emphasize about exoscope. Maybe I think in the future, uh, and, uh, maybe some, maybe almost 100% replace from the microscope, I think, I, think, I hope. Maybe, uh, maybe. Okay. maybe. Uh, this time, this time in December, uh, we will have some uh, cadaver workshop with I Cherian uh, for the young residents in, in my place in Jimin. So welcome. In December, oh, yeah. yeah. December. So okay, you can you can send yes, you can send us uh, the invitation, please. Okay, then, of course, uh, yes, of course. Uh, I can spread to the YNS. I will do it. I will do it. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for the wonderful talk, Professor. And we have learned a lot. And if there will be any more questions, uh, we'll ask, sure. So I would like to uh, invite our next speaker. And he's a neurosurgeon from Bangladesh. He's a young neurosurgeon. And he will be talking on hybrid neurovascular surgery in the era of uh, endovascular intervention in a country like Bangladesh. So uh, I would like to invite our sp next speaker. Please, Dr. Saidur Rama. Um, thank you, Professor, for giving me this opportunity. And first of all, I want to thank the previous speaker, Professor Albert Stefano, for a brilliant presentation and modern about modern technologies. And I am always thankful to Professor Kato Shetse for taking me as a fellow in her institute and also giving me the opportunities to present an uh, international platform like this. Can you see my slides? Yes. Thank you. So uh, today I'm going to talk about hybrid neurovascular surgery in the era of endovascular intervention in a country like Bangladesh. Um, actually, I did my fellowship in uh, Professor Kato Sessions Institute on hybrid neurovascular surgery and scalpel surgery. And I'm very much lucky to work in a center of Bangladesh which have both microscopic and endovascular. Uh, opportunities. So I want to start uh, with this slide. Actually, this is a great picture taken by NASA with Voyager 1 in back 1990. And the dot within this red circle is actually the art. So we think the art is very large. Actually, it is very small. It's a small like a dust. So uh, it, you can barely notice it. So along with uh, 700 populations, all the creatures, including sea creatures and all animals live within here. So actually everything is uh, nowadays going a mini as minimalistic as like this art, like procedures of macroscopic surgery is going to be more like endoscopic or endoscopic. Similarly, also in case of vascular pathologies, uh, more minimally invasive procedures are nowadays preferred like endovascular procedures in the world wide, you know that in Europe, the endovascular is the main uh, main procedure for vascular pathologies. Also in Asia, it is becoming more popular nowadays. So what is hybrid neurovascular surgery? Uh, actually, a doctor who can perform both microsurgery and endovascular intervention uh, is called hybrid neurovascular surgery. So the question is, is it possible to learn both microvascular and vascular treatment simultaneously? Uh, uh, of course, a person who can drive a car also can fly a, actually a plane. It depends on your mind setup. It's the availability of the facility, the training, patience, and dedication. So another question, why a neurosurgeon should do endovascular treatment? And my question is, why not? Actually, a neurosurgeon knows the vascular anatomy better, can manage complications better, can master it earlier, and it's a minimally invasive procedure, and he will not be biased as he knows both endovascular and microscopic procedures. 
So uh, if a person with microscopic uh, he will try to convince the patient for microscopic surgery for all of his cases. And a person who knows only the endovascular procedure, he'll definitely convince a patient for endovascular treatment. But a person, a hyperneurosurgeon who knows the both, he will never be biased. So it's like from, in, from Bangladesh, if I want to go Australia or any other places, there are many roads. It depends upon your choice and availability of the transportation, actually. So it's your choice, whether you want to go hybrid or microvascular or endovascular. So what is the problem in countries like Bangladesh? Uh, in countries like Bangladesh, there is lack of health insurance. And you know the endovascular procedures are very expensive. And also materials are not available everywhere. And uh, therefore there is some lack of expertise. And also many neurosurgeons think it's other job like neurologist or uh, neuro interventionist, it's the problem. So these problems are present also in Bangladesh. Now I'm going to show you uh, some of our experiences in our center with all of these limitations. Now I'm going to uh, talk about some microsurgical procedures. In this patient, you can uh, appreciate there is uh, a small AVM on the right frontal lobe. And you see, for such lesions, oh, definitely straight for, oh, go for straightforward microsurgery. So it's easier with surgery. And this case, this particular case, this patient was actually a medical student, you see. On the right, on the right side, uh, there was a big hematoma. Patient presented with an ICH and she was deteriorating rapidly. So fortunately, we, can, we could took her to the theater immediately. And you see, uh, we, 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 we took the patient to endovascular suit and first uh, performed an ESA and we found this small apron which ruptured. So if this patient presented to an endovascular, endovascular interventionist, he will definitely um, embolize this, but this patient will need surgery also because there was a big hematoma which is compressing the brain and the patient was deteriorating rapidly. So as we do both, we did both the DSA and we also performed the surgery and this the shot is taken after the surgery, you see there is no more ABM. So there is a patient could have a comprehensive management in the same team. Now let's discuss about embolization. There are some AVMs which are surgically very much challenging like this, you see. This is a deep temporal AVM, you see, on the under surface of the temporal lobe. So we did embolization for this. This is a small AVM and this is surgically challenging corridor. So we embolized such patient. And now after embolization, this is another AVM. Also see, there is an AVM just under surface of the temporal lobe. This is also surgically challenging corridor. So for such cases, we prefer embolization. And you see, there is uh, no more feeling of the AVM. So we also do hybrid procedures. Like we, we go for uh, embolization and surgery for the same patients. Initially, we did it in a separator because we don't have any hybrid operation theater. So this patient, you see, presented with hematoma, interventional hemorrhage, and you see there is a spaniel AVM. You can appreciate the AVM. So we first uh, embolized the uh, big ACA feeders, which are coming from the under surface. Then we uh, did craniotomy and we excised the AVM and the patient was fine actually after surgery. And he initially presented with hemiparesis, but uh, later on he became normal. You can see after surgery and uh, the, you can see the artifacts from the uh, earlier on expressed here. So this is another AVM. We embolize this patient initially. Then what happened? Then after two days, this patient deteriorated. We took the patient to the upper uh, CT scan console and we uh, had a CT scan and showed hematoma. So uh, from this case, we have a learning that we should go 
for surgery in the same day because we waited for two days for this patient for surgery and within meantime the patient had a bleeding from that day uh, we are planning hybrid in the same day that means we embolize the patient earlier in the morning and take the patient to OR for definitive surgery like this you can see uh, this is the large apm in the paratoxipetal region you see the vascularity it's a huge apm this patient presented with headache actually with a severe headache and we see feeders are coming from the MCA. Also, you see there is some flow related aneurysm in the MCA. And also, feeders are coming from the posterior circulation, also from the ECA. So, this APM was actually very large with the spazula martin grade, uh, high spazula martin grade, and supplementary grade. You see, spazula martin grade was four, and supplementary grade was seven. So what we did, we first, the, the feeders from the posterior circulation was a difficult one. So we embolized from the posterior circulation first. Then uh, we exercised the APM because uh, the MC feeders uh, are very easy to control. First about aneurysm. For most of the aneurysms, we still we go for surgery because endovascular materials are not available also patient to pay for the cost. But for some APMs, when patient can appear, you see this patient, this patient uh, has um, patient presented with left-sided proptosis, sudden proptosis with redness and also complete ophthalmoplasia. And MRI scan, you can uh, appreciate uh, uh, there is flow voids, the large flow void in the uh, left cavernous region here. And also you can, on the, on the contrast image below, you can see the additions of the contrast partially. So we had in this session. This patient actually had a cavernous aneurysm which ruptured and had a pelvic cavernous as a result. So for this patient, if this patient was in Japan or in another country like Europe, probably they would prefer an endoscopic procedure with coiling and uh, insertion of the four diverter, uh, as the patient could not afford and there is no insurance in our country. So we went for surgery. Actually, we did what we did. We did a high flow bypass with ECA and M2 with the radial conduit. And, and then we ligated the internal catheter artery. You can appreciate on this street picture. And on the right side, you can um, appreciate the DSA. Uh, the radial graft is patent, conduit is patent. And the IC, you can see it is blocked. So, uh, and also, uh, and also there is uh, no feeling of the fistula as the ICA is already ligated proximally. This is another case. You can see there is a huge flow pad uh, which took brilliant contrast on the left side and the patient presented with hemiparesis. In the DSA, you can see there is a large aneurysm, giant aneurysm uh, coming from the MC. Fortunately, this patient could afford the endovascular treatment. So we first inserted some coils within the aneurysm to reduce the flow. Then we inserted a flow diverter. And on the right side picture, you can see the DSA shot after the flow diverter. And this is after uh, six months after the procedure and the patient was doing fine. You can see MCA is patent. So this is actually the beauty of the flow diverter. This is another particular case. This patient had lower uterine scissor section. And you can see this patient was admitted for lower return season and section. On the day of admission, uh, she went to bathroom and fell down and she had severe headache. So we attended the patient and uh, we advised on CT scan. You can see there is interventricular hematoma on the left side. And we then we uh, also advised the CT angiogram and you can see uh, there is a large aneurysm in the uh, pica, P3, P4 junction. So for this patient, this patient had a seizure in section. And again, if you advise this patient for surgery, uh, it's very difficult for the patient. So we, uh, and, uh, we offered her endovascular treatment and she agreed. And we did just, you see, as uh, from P4, you can occlude the pica. So we just uh, occluded the pica with glue. And uh, it was gone on the left side. You can see, on the right side, you can see there is no any reason. So there are some pathologies uh, vascular pathologies, which are very, very difficult to treat surgically, like vertebral venous fistula. Uh, we have several cases. This is one of uh, those cases. 
This patient, young patient, uh, 17 years old male, presented with quadriparesis and the wasting of the upper limb muscles, small muscles of the hand. You can see uh, there is a fistulous connection between the vertebral artery and the perivertebral venous structures, which extended into the epidural plane, compressing the spinal cord. You can see this shoot shows there is a huge epidural sac feeding, uh, fitted by the vertebral artery. So what we did, we put some coil within the sac and also within the fistulous connection. You can see the coils. Then we, 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 then we embolized with glue. And on the left side, you can see the pre-op picture on the right side, you see that this sac which was compressing the uh, spinal cord, upper cervical spinal cord is gone and the patient is good. So in conclusion, endovascular and microsurgery are two arms of a neurosurgeon. They are not enemy. Only a hybrid neurovascular surgeon can offer non-biased comprehensive solution of neurovascular pathologies. With the advancement of technologies and expertise, endovascular and endoscopic procedures will be the future. Actually, we are doing uh, procedures transfemoral in our country, but uh, why now you went to Japan? Congress was doing all the procedures transradially, and it is uh, very much beneficial for the patient because she, they can leave the hospital areas and it's not embarrassing for them at all. Because if you do transfemoral, the patient has to be in a stick position for at least six hours. He or she cannot move his limbs. But if we do a transradial procedures, uh, and if we use a radial bracelet, and uh, the patient is fine, she can move from the, uh, just after the procedure. So we also started actually transradial DSA first because we don't have the materials for to do transradial procedures in our country. We are doing. We started with transradial DSA. Hopefully one day we'll have materials to do all the procedures transradially. So the important thing, uh, this surgical procedures or the development of surgery is like a really running sprint. You can see the most important thing is not to run only fast by yourself. You have to, you have to hand over the baton to the next runner. The most important thing is not to be fast, but to complete the race. So we believe in this. Hopefully in the future generation, the vascular surgeon will be the hybrid vascular surgeon only. So, we don't have a hybrid operation theater now, but hopefully in the future we'll have a hybrid operation theater like this so that patient will be more safe and we will be we'll feel more comfortable to the procedures. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, Dr. Sahidur Rahman, just for this uh, nice talk. And uh, rightly said that hybrid neurosurgery is the future and a neurosurgeon who is both well versed in endovascular and micro neurosurgery, he can be the he or she can be the ideal choice, or he can or she can give unbiased opinion for the right approach. So, the panel is open for the discussion. If there are any questions, uh, please ask questions. Professor Yoko, do you have any comment? <clears throat> Well, thank you very much, Shahid. So the wonderful talk, wonderful talk. So just I want to ask, uh, what? Yes, I So what is thank the you. strategy yeah, when you do the pre-operative embolization of the ABM? So what is your strategy? So do you have any uh, some uh, some tips for the good embolization? Or yes, actually, uh, uh, ABM embolization, uh, it uh, the endovascular procedure had success rate uh, was not good before, but the advancement of the embolizing agents and the procedure and the material, other materials, and along with the development of technologies like pressure cooker technologies, transvenous procedures, the success rate is becoming more and more higher. Mm -hmm. Currently uh, in our center, if the patient can afford for a small APM, we'll, we'll also go for embolization if the patient chooses it. But for difficult ABMs with deep feeders, for large ABM with deep feeders, we prefer embolizing the deep feeders first, which makes the surgery very much easy. And we have uh, several experiences regarding such cases. And we currently, we go same day surgery as uh, we have experienced some hemorrhage if we delay the surgery. So we have, we don't, we cannot operate every day. We have our scheduled operation day. So we book the case for embolization earlier in the morning of the day we have the operation theater. 
Then we take the patient to the theater and the, uh, along with the anesthetist and I'll do the procedures and it's very much easy if you can take the control of the deep theater surgery. Thank you very much. So Kimar Sensei, uh, do you agree to his uh, uh, answer? Kimar Sensei? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Okukato. Uh, thank you, uh, Shabet. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic lecture. I can totally, of course, agree with your opinion and comment. And uh, of course, the uh, treatment strategy is, is uh, acceptable for us, Japanese neuroscience all. So my question is, uh, if you have need to some duration between the uh, endovascular approach and the uh, direct approach, so so if, if, so some AVM can be treated to, on the same day after the endovascular treatment, or do you need some interval between the treatment and the vascular and the uh, open surgery? Thank you. Uh, for a nice question. Actually, uh, nowadays, uh, because our operation theaters are very much busy and uh, we cannot operate 24 hours in a day. So uh, for safety of the patient, we prefer to book the patient. If we want to do both embolization and surgery for one patient, uh, we prefer embolization and surgery the same day because uh, it's yeah. risky for this patient other, otherwise in our setup. No. Do you do you that by not uh, I, I don't think you directly uh, perform the endovascular surgery, of course, the uh, in open surgery in, on the same press, uh, uh, surgeon can do. Or uh, endovascular surgeon can treat the patient with an embrace. After that, the, the surgeon can attend the surgery. Yeah, it, it should be another uh, surgeon can be treated the, the same patient. Uh, yeah, it can be an option, but in our center, we are, actually we are doing both. We, are doing both. we have uh, we just make two teams, one team out in the theater, and another team go for embolization. Then you take the patient to the theater and just operate. And basically, we have the same team, same team doing both. Same team. Same Thank team. you. Same team. Same team. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good, good theater in your operation room. Very clean and a very. Uh, cutting edge uh, uh, theater. Yeah, very, I'm uh, so impressed. Thank you. Actually, we want to have such a theater. Our theater is not <laughs> as much good, but our endovascular suit is very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is a question from Dr. Krishna Verda. So, Dr. Krishna Virda, you are allowed to talk. You can directly ask, or should I narrate the question? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Nice to uh, good evening. Um, nice to meet you. Good evening, I really miss you guys. <laughs> yes. Shahid, Same please here. close your slides, please. Is it yeah, I, I just want the short question is the. Uh, what is the duration between embolization and uh, surgery? Immediately, did you do you take for surgery or you you wait for some time? I, ideally, actually, ideally, what should be done? Actually, ideally, uh, we can wait if you can observe the patient closely. But in our setup, uh, it's safer to do surgery the same day from our experience. Mm. I, okay, okay, thank you. Shahid, the, what's the embryo material do you use? Uh, we use uh, onyx. Onyx? Onyx. 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 Mm. Yes. Please, uh, I have one question, Dr. Shahidur. <clears throat> what was the hypothesis behind the bleeding after embolization? Okay, so actually, uh, nowadays, we thought that AVM arises from the arteries initially, but um, there is some venous hypothesis. So if there are some venous foot plates for the AVM, and if you keep one of the foot uh, plate, it will recur or repeat. So maybe uh, some glue just closed partially the veins and it ruptured, maybe. Because in our shoot, we didn't see any part of the AVM, but probably there was some remnant. It's partially right that uh, because uh, we go for the arterial feeders and inject uh, onyx through them. And yes. there was one arterial feeder which was there. 
and there is choroidal supply to the avium nidus which comes from the deep part and yes, yes. Uh, choroidal supply is uh, not for embolization yes. the uh, feeders are still there but the onyx embolization has led to the blockade of the uh, venous drainage and that's why the uh, avium was looking good after embolization but still the supply was coming to the emboli uh, the uh, embolized avium that's yes. why the there was uh, uh, hematoma after the uh, little bit weight Yes, because the cordial uh, feeders are very small and the initial uh, DSA, we cannot uh, appreciate the, the feeders because the high flow feeders yes. are taking all the blood. Yes. Uh, so that's why if we if we could embolize simultaneously from the venous end and the arterial end, like pressure cooker technique, it's better. It will block all. But currently, we don't have materials and expertise to do transvenous embolization. Hopefully, we'll do one day. Yes, and second is that uh, the duration after embolization, it is said that uh, if you are embolizing uh, any particular tumor or uh, AVM, then you should do surgery within 48 hours uh, yes, to yes. prevent recanalization or the uh, formation of the those uh, small vessels which uh, becomes bigger in case of embolization, the small arterioles or the choroidal vessels. That's why uh, do it as early as possible. Yes, actually, uh, in that particular case, uh, the patient which bleeded, we thought that it was complete, actually. Actually, we thought that it was complete. Uh, this was our learning, actually, from that case. So how was the experience of cutting the AVM after embolization? Did it bleed Good. profusely? <laughs> like, uh, no, 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 it's, it's very nice. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. It bleeds a bit, but it's really nice. It's easy. It's easy. There is no three at all. <laughs> During ABM surgery with the embolization, I think I feel as a neurosurgeon, uh, most thrilling is to exercise the AVM without embolization because it's like yes. a time bomb. But AVM with embolization, there is no uh, three at all. It's like a dead snake. It's a wonderful experience. So it, uh... So, uh, are there any more questions? Thank you, Dr. Saidur. Uh, and uh, it, it was a wonderful presentation and wonderful theme. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, so Professor, should uh, can you please give your closing remarks? Me? Kato? Yeah, yeah, Professor. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, Dr. Shahid, one more question for you. So. Uh, when you embolize of the large, such as a five, six, seven centimeter of the AVM, so how much you want to embolize? Because uh, you you should think about uh, post embolization of the hyperperfusion. So what is the plan? Actually, uh, during embolization of large AVMs, the thing we are most afraid of early embolization of the draining veins, it will get catastrophic. So if we plan for surgery and embolization, we prefer not to embolize too much. We just want to embolize the difficult feeders so that we can take control of the feeders earlier because ultimately we'll exercise this area. Okay, okay, so maybe you can focus on just uh, the deep feeders. Yes, yes, right? thank you. Okay. Yes, thank it's also uh, cost effective for the patient. Thanks so much. So the Shahid is one of the, the best uh, fellow uh, of us. Uh, we are very proud of you. Thank you very much for your you. great, very <laughs> great presentation. Actually, I'm missing Japan yet. Uh, yes, yes. I'm not of yet. course, yeah. you should come back again. Okay. Of course, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think as today so we had a very uh, good two lectures. Uh, one is Sofinas. Sofinas is uh, uh, maybe I he used to be a pediatric neurosurgeon now now also, but. Uh, uh, he always uh, uh, show us a very uh, advanced uh, treatment of the uh, neurosurgical uh, uh, diseases. So maybe the young doctors, maybe the, you can uh, visit the Sofiano's place. I, I visit several times. Very nice uh, equip, equipped, uh, and also that they have a very uh, huge uh, uh, hands-on uh, workshop place. So maybe in uh, upcoming December, the, all of you uh, go to two men in Russia, I think. And also the uh, Shahid, maybe the uh, my best wishes to your future career. 
and uh, uh, please brush up your uh, skills. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hi, Sensei. What about the Albert today? What about the Albert Sensei? Uh, he is busy in MC aneurysm surgery. Oh. There was a ruptured aneurysm case. He okay. messaged me three hours back that uh, oh, he will okay. delay the surgery. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, Ishu, please. So the session is now complete and uh, we have very wonderful talk. So we are now going to say bye bye to everyone. Okay. Um, see you next month. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.